and we'll jump right in. So there's this character from Captain America who's uh, growing into her own. Very much so. And in a new show on ABC, she's about to show everyone what she is made of. I spoke with the actress who brings her to life. Mm, something's up. Thompson's working on his next medal. Got word of a fence trying to sell one of Stark's inventions. A club owner named Spider Raymond. Where's it happening? Need to know only. Kind of gives you a warm feeling, doesn't it? Hey, you refill. I actually am still drinking that. Post eyes at the exits and at the newsstand across the street. Dress sharp, handkerchiefs, spit shine. It'll be a rich crowd. Do your best. I'll call O'Dwyer, get you some uniform backup. Too showy. Raymond's paranoid. The only thing he lets slide are blondes and money. If we want to grab Raymond and his buyer with whatever it is that Stark is selling, then I go in light and fast. We want everyone feeling real comfortable. Two men, sidearms only. Now you did it in Okinawa? Sometimes. Other times we brought a tank. Figured we'd save that for later. <laughs> OK, Thompson, this is your play. Ground and beans over there, Carter? This is field agents only. It's OK, Chief. Let her stay. Maybe she'll learn something. Oh, thank you, Agent. I already have. Captain America fans, you are in luck. As you just saw, Agent Peggy Carter is living on, and she's bringing all of the action, the drama, and the wit that you love to Marvel's Agent Carter, airing right here on ABC Tuesday nights. Agent Carter herself, Haley Atwell, is joining us this morning. Haley, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. How are you? I am fabulous. You know, I love Agent Carter. She is one heck of a woman, I'll tell you that. She uh, is smart and uh, <laughs> where, where she certainly we, is. Yeah. She is. Where are we kind of picking up the story here with Agent Carter? So it's 1946, which means it's a year after she's lost Captain America and she thinks that he's, he's dead. And so she's grieving and she's back at the SSR, uh, SSR working as a, as a spy. But she's reduced to kind of taking orders for lunch, uh, making coffee, answering the phone. And she's frustrated and she's bored. So um, kind of Q, uh, Q Howard Stark, who comes into her life and sets her on a secret mission. And that kind of changes the course of her life and means that she can start to get back to kind of her true destiny, which is to be the best buy that she can possibly be and carry on the work of Steve. And I'll tell you what, she does it looking fabulous. She is smart. Is there a lot of uh, kind of similarities between you and Agent Carter? <laughs> Well, all I can say is I'm very clumsy in, compared to, in comparison <laughs> to, um, to Peggy. I have unfortunately kicked various stuntmen in the um, sensitive areas. And uh, <laughs> I'm not that popular with the men on set uh, in terms of having accidentally hit a grip over the back with a lead pipe. I've kicked a chair into one of the assistant directors all while I was rehearsing stunts. So. Um, I would say that I'm not as cool as Peggy. I'm a bit of I'm a bit of a goofball and I'm a bit clumsy, um, which is why it's very it's really fun to put the uniform on and pretend that I'm you know I got it all sussed. <laughs> you become much more smoother once you become the Agent Carter. Yeah, she's like yeah, she's suddenly all in control and I'm secretly inside like you know the one of those ducks you see the feet going crazy underneath the surface of the water. That's really me underneath. Well, and I love all of your tweets. I love you with the mustache on. You've got your wig on your dad. I love your <laughs> tweets. Just, uh, just watching your tweets and your pictures and everything, I couldn't even imagine what's going on behind the scenes. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm just surprised that we get any work done at all because we're having so much fun. And I, I'm lucky that I know Dominic Cooper and James Darcy, who play Howard Stark and, and Edwin Jarvis. And I've known them for about 10 years. And we, every time we're together, we're kind of like five-year-old kids. We're very, very silly and very goofy. Um, but it, it, it's, it just means that the whole experience of going to work is a, is a real pleasurable one. And I think it makes us work better, too. So is there anything that you can tell us maybe about upcoming in the season? Where are we going to go? Any maybe some big like, you know, bombshells that are going to happen? Yeah, well, what's really exciting is that the first two episodes, which obviously air together, they set up the world of Peggy and the characters that we're going to come across later on in the season. But what happens is that it feels almost like um, a film 
in its completion in terms of what happens by the end of season two, episode two. So by the time season episode three starts, it takes on a completely different turn, and and there are some bombshells and some twists, and it becomes darker and it becomes very personal to Peggy's life. So it's very exciting to see where the season kind of goes um, and the elements of surprise. It's a real adventure, and I think audiences are going to love watching it. Well, Haley, I'm not only going to be looking forward to this season, but I'm looking forward to more of your tweets and to see what you're doing behind the scenes. <laughs> I'll keep them coming, I promise. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll uh, send some good vibes to all the gentlemen uh, on the set to make sure that they, you know, walk away in one piece during all of your stunts as well. Yeah. Yes, thank you. If you could send us a couple of ice packs or um, some peas, that'd be great too. <laughs> I think we'll need that. Thank you so much, Haley, for joining us this morning. I can't wait to see how the season pans out. Marvel's Agent Carter is on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. right here on KGAN 9 ABC. Don't go anywhere. The Morning Blend will be right back.